takes its toll. But listen closely. Not for very much longer. I got to keep control. Yeah! On the 19th of July this year, Christian Lavacombe played the role of Riff Raff for a record breaking 1,477 performances. We're going to go and have a chat with him right now to hear what he has to say about that. You've been in the show, or you've done, you've played Riff Raff 1,477 times. That was on the 19th of July. Oh, yep. yep. So it's even more now. So it's going up by the day. Yeah, so <laughs> how does that feel? Well, it feels, well, it's just a byproduct of me doing a show that I really love and a mm. character I really love. And, you know, it's never my intention to, it was never my intention to break a record, mm. but it's, it's a nice thing. And, uh, you know, the one thing that keeps me going with Rocky Horror is the audiences. I believe you went to see the show mm. yesterday. Yep, and it. the audiences are like no other audiences that I've ever encountered in any other show I've done. Yeah. So, you know, they keep me so entertained and they're so dedicated to the show that um, that pushes me along. And, you know, I've done... Uh, in total, because I've done other characters as well, then I've mm. done over 1,600 performances of Rocky. And um, I don't think you could do that unless you're having a good time yeah. and enjoying it. I don't get bored of the show. I was going to say, that's the obvious question really, isn't it? Oh, what anyone would say, surely you must get bored. Like, when you're getting ready, do you just do, have you ever thought to yourself, oh my goodness, here we, I really cannot be bothered to do this today? Well, I think no matter who you are, Everybody has a day like that. Mm, true. <laughs> so no matter what yeah. job you're doing, uh, I don't think that changes. Yeah, and like you said, not everybody has an audience out there oh, that can yeah. boost you. Like I, I recognise it it's a privileged position to be an actor and working. So, um, you know, I've always appreciated that. And mm. I come from a very small town in New Zealand. So, mm. um, you know, being here and living in the, in the UK and working here as an actor is... A wonderful thing. Mm, isn't it yeah. um, a coincidence that Richard O'Brien now lives in New Zealand? Yes. We have a very, obviously, you know, decades apart, but we have a very similar um, background, really, because I grew up in the UK until I was 10, and then my family emigrated to New Zealand. Mm. And uh, Richard O'Brien had the same experience. He was here, um, I think, in Cheltenham, I think, until he was about 10, and then he moved to New Zealand. And, um, and now he lives it lives back there mm. and my family lives there as well so it's um yeah there are similarities mm. yeah i mean you've obviously met each other we've toured a lot together yeah. uh we've done a few different tours uh not not in the uk although we did do a west end version of rocky horror a few years back yeah and was that the live did that was the live, live version one. That's that right. must have been amazing doing that I mean, what was the adrenaline like that night well there's nothing like you know it's normal, you know, you have adrenaline anyway when you've got a thousand people watching you mm. in the audience, but when you mm. have an unknown quantity yeah. of people watching you and it's being filmed, then certainly it gives you an appreciation for those people who do all those live television shows. Yes. It's how amazing to know that there's, if you muck up, there's, a, you know, millions of, potentially millions of people watching you. But, not, but more so with this one, because people know, this, the audience um, know the script, don't they? Well, it's like that on, on, you know, in the stage show as well. I have yeah. seen, uh, I have seen people before, not many people can do it, but the narrator in, in Rocky Horror who can talk back to the audience. Yeah. You know, quite often he'll go, oh, not quite often, but sometimes. Yeah. He'll go, I'm not sure what my line is, and someone will call it out. Uh, so, you know. Yeah, you um, can do that as the narrator, I suppose. Can't you can. You? You can I can't do it as riff raff, but you bit. can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but certainly the narrator has a bit of freedom. There. And we had a great yeah. audience, or you had a great audience last night, didn't you? They were really going for it. Oh, yeah, they're fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're lots of fun. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's a battle not for us to not laugh at what I think the it, audience say. It looked a bit yeah. close that last night in some places, <laughs> do you think? I'm sure everybody has a moment once in a while. Has yeah. anybody ever called out something that you... I mean, you've got the obvious responses, yeah. but has anyone ever called out something so odd that, that you've j is completely taking you by surprise? Uh, do you know what? It, it does happen every couple of weeks. And because Rocky Horror is one of those shows where people come back time and time again sometimes people go away and think about it uh, and go yeah. oh I know I'm mm, going to say this next time because mm. there was one last night with the Boris Johnson oh yes yeah. I can't remember what yeah. it was what it was the response to so, yes yeah. uh Quite often there'll be uh, some topical kind yes. of things yelled out. Yeah. And Boris Johnson's just been coming up for the last couple of weeks okay. in the show. Yeah. Right. But, you know, 
he's topical he probably come up a lot more mm, you probably will <laughs> so you've been doing this for how many years um i first played riffraff I think about eight or nine years ago. Mm -hmm. I haven't been doing it the whole way through. I've gone away and done other shows mm, and done other sure. things. But uh, that was probably the, f the first time I played Riff Raff. Okay, so have you aged him over that period of time? Yes. Makeup-wise, makeup or... he looks quite different. He looked very youthful when I first started. Right. And I think that's because I just didn't know him well enough. And now, uh, when you play a character so long, then um, it becomes a part of you. Mm. And, you know, the the stance and the voice that he uses and and the reflection in the mirror becomes something that you're really used to. It's like having mm. a split personality. Mm. It's like, you know, uh, I've said this before, but I when I look in the mirror, I look in the mirror more as this character than I do as myself because, yeah. you know, I have to put the makeup on and, yeah. you know, throughout the show. So um, it's weird if you look in the mirror and you're seeing someone else constantly for years on end, mm. then it's like that person is you. Mm. As weird as that sounds. Yeah, it is. That is a bit of. Um, you can almost make another film out of that, couldn't you? you totally, can do yeah. Those. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. There's an idea there. Yeah, make yeah. a million. Um, so, is there any one performance that stands out for you out of all the ones you've done? Um, I'm pretty sure probably the first performance I did that Richard O'Brien was on stage with because for me as a, when I was a teenager and I absolutely adored the film as a teenager, my friends used to get together and we used to watch the film on a Friday night sometimes and uh, I certainly went to quite a few late night showings in New Zealand like at a, there was a cinema that was going to be knocked down and, and so they had a late night midnight showing of Rocky Horror and I went along dressed up and had a great time. And so in those days, I never would have imagined, one, being in Rocky Horror, two, um, being, uh, meeting Richard O'Brien and working with Richard O'Brien. Yeah. So it was a dream come true for me to be, you know, sharing the stage with him and, you know, an extra special thing for me to be playing Riff Raff, which, you know, his, his role, mm. he wrote it, he created it, and when people think of Riff Raff, they think of Richard O'Brien, rightly yeah, so. Yeah, but I think they think of you now. When they see you, it's pretty obvious that everyone is very geared up to seeing you in that part. Well, the, the audiences are very supportive, and yeah. they, um, you know, they adore the characters, and I think they appreciate someone who um, also is a fan of the show. Yeah. I think people, you know, anyone who follows me on Twitter or Instagram or whatever, they know I'm a fan of Rocky Horror and mm -hmm. the audiences come along and I think they really appreciate mm -hmm. that because I do try and put a little element of Richard O'Brien in the character and I also give an element of myself as well. Mm -hmm. Did he give you any advice? Um, I think uh, the creators of the show always have uh, brilliant advice for the actors and uh, more often he is, it doesn't make any difference how you sing it, just, you know, as long as you're playing the intention of the song yeah. and it's about getting the meaning across rather than just mm. doing a big, huge yeah. sing. Yeah. yeah. So what's it like in rehearsal then? Because obviously you have different casts coming in and out yes. all the time and you yeah. obviously know your role as Riff yeah. Raff. How does it work when other people come in? Well, I have rehearsed this show for probably, I think I worked it out the other day, 10 months of my life I've spent rehearsing this show. And because, you know, every time we have a month's rehearsal mm, mm. and um, but I learn something every time I do those new rehearsals and um, you have to figure out new things with different casts and different people and um, so you know the rehearsals are necessary yeah yeah I, I don't I don't ever go oh my god I'm gonna be so bored in rehearsals mm. I have to figure it out again because it's mm. always new and fresh and um, I actually love doing it without the pressure of an audience. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's fun. Ah, it's fun. A lot of actors say that, don't they? They love all the rehearsal yes. and all the camaraderie. Yes. And then you've yeah. got to perform it and then it's a bit like, ooh. It's like, yeah, there's the pressure. And there yeah. is definite pressure when you're, you know, especially you want, as an actor, you want it to be good mm -hmm. and you want yourself to be good and you don't want to fool yourself, of course. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it, sometimes it uh, can be a little bit like, you know, jumping off a diving board you know mm. you go oh my gosh I've got to go out there in front of these people now because I'm think? naturally a shy person mm. so I don't necessarily um, you know it's cha it's challenging for me to be on stage in front of people so um, but that's what the rehearsals are for and so. do you know what amazes me as well with you hearing you now is 
where does that voice come from when you sing? Oh, because wow. I'm quite a I'm quite a quiet spoken person. So you save it and it. <laughs> yes. Do you know what I think? Because I come from a completely non-performing family. Nobody sings in my family. Nobody performs. Nobody does anything like that. So uh, I think my family have always gone. Where does that come from? Yeah, or who you've are got you? A or, yeah. <laughs> no, nobody for generations. <laughs> You're not really an alien, are you? Well, maybe that explains it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would explain you it. <laughs> so, um, have you got any insider secrets, perhaps, that you could tell us that nobody else knows? You can just tell. Well, I share a lot on social media, so <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if there are too many secrets, but uh, yeah, do you know actors always we always forget what the audience don't know because you know we're always back mm. we're always backstage and uh, there was one little thing that I did see that's probably not a secret now, but some people might not know, and that's what the back of behind the bed looks. Like. Oh yes, yes, yeah. totally. Uh, I, I am a I, I class myself as an artist of sorts. I wanted to be a painter, not an actor. Although I love acting. And um, so I take out that frustration on the back of the set. So uh, I get everybody, I take it upon my responsibility to get everybody to sign the back of the bed and it's turned into a work of art, really. Yeah, we we'll have to put a picture up of, of it because it looks amazing. And now we've filled that up, so now we've moved on to another set piece. So now we're, oh, we're doing the back of the car. Oh, brilliant. Yes. Yeah, and the audiences never get to see that, but I do share the occasional picture of it. Oh, brilliant. Well, yeah. we we'll look forward to seeing that then. <laughs> brilliant. So, um, people who are coming, yes. who might be a little bit afraid of dressing up, yep. what would you suggest is the easiest or best kind of outfit to wear? Well, of course, coming... of course, you don't you don't have to dress no, up. There's no, no, you don't have to dress up at all. Mm -hmm. But you could just wear. Well, you could just wear a t-shirt, yeah. yeah, or wear red. I think yeah. red's a good yeah. colour for Rocky Horror. Definitely. Or, um, you know... Red a, boa, maybe? A red boa, yeah. Mm. yeah. I'm answering my own question. You are, indeed. Yeah. But, you know, there are so many different characters, you know, even, uh, you know, a pair, a bow tie and some glasses would good work. Good one. Well. Yes, yeah. nice and easy. Yeah, yeah, that would work. Well, we better let you talking of getting dressed up. Well, you're, you're, you're practically ready to go, ready to I'm go early. anyway. We've just got to do a bit more dabbing, <laughs> yeah. probably. Yeah. A few more lines. I'll them in there. Yeah. Well, it's been so lovely to meet you. Oh, it's Thanks been a for chatting to us today. And, uh, and uh, break legs for the rest of the run. Thank you so much. Oh, but it's in class.